Welcome to Emerging Technologies Through a Pragmatic Lens. My name is John Alexander. I work with a broad spectrum of faculty. Some people have never used Zoom. Others are quite facile with technology. Their journey to incorporate emerging technologies starts with one step. So now let's talk about today's agenda. So, the recent proliferation of emerging technologies has generated lots of emotion, from excitement and exuberance to fear and uncertainty. This talk will explore the following key questions. One, which emergent technologies have a low barrier to entry? Two, what are some possible use cases of emergent technologies from different industries? And three, how can we get started using these emergent technologies? So, the three emerging technologies we'll focus on today are AI, Unity, as well as Web3. So, AI or artificial intelligence. Yes, it's a complicated subject, but we want to break it down to the most basic definition. According to IBM.com, AI is a field that combines computer science and robust data sets to enable problem solving. This seems to be a positive thing, right? Well, not necessarily. In November 2022, a company named OpenAI in Silicon Valley launched ChatGPT, which caused a mixture of fear and excitement. From the perspective of fear, Robin Foreman, Tulane Provost, notes that many faculty aren't ready for ChatGPT and aren't sure how to use this as a tool to support their teaching and learning. Also, many view ChatGPT as a, quote, haven for cheaters. Also, AI plagiarism can be hard to prove. For example, Darren Hick, philosophy professor at Furman University, noted that word by word, text created with ChatGPT was well written, however, the content was not entirely accurate, and it was written wrong as it referenced a nonsensical claim, which was simply incorrect. Now, um, OpenAI recently created a new tool called Classifier, and basically you need an OpenAI account to use it, and to use it, you simply paste the text into a box and click a button, and it will tell you whether it thinks the text is very likely, unlikely, unclear if it is, possibly, or likely, AI-generated. But despite some of the negative aspects of ChatGPT, there is also lots of excitement surrounding it, as it has lots of capabilities as far as supporting students. Some of the exciting ways to use ChatGPT to support students include academic support, writing support, and critical thinking. So let's talk about three possible chat GPT use cases in terms of education, sales, and business. So, in terms of use cases in education, it's possible to use chat GPT to write outlines and then write the paper without chat GPT. Chat GPT could also be helpful in terms of creating personalized lesson plans, uh, acting as an after hours tutor, a debate partner, helping ESL students improve basic writing skills. So a great resource for AI in the classroom is Ditch That Textbook, ditchthattextbook.com slash AI. In terms of use cases in sales, uh, we could think about personalized sales scripts, FAQs, as well as support and training documents. And as far as use cases in business, um, situations involving customer engagement as well as content generation. Okay, so you're probably thinking, how can we get started with AI in education? Because this is a critical thing, practical information. So my suggestion would be to look at the educational use cases slide I just mentioned. There is also a New York Times article the link is here. Don't ban chat GPT in schools. Teach with it. 
And there's also a link on this slide, Ethan Mollick, who is really a key opinion leader. He is a Wharton professor and AI evangelist who has actually gone so far as to include an AI policy in his syllabus, which you can see on screen. Now, our next topic is Unity. So Unity is a game engine, one of the most popular game engines, along with Unreal Engine. And a game engine is basically a software framework used to create games. So possible use cases for Unity. Again, it's useful for creating games, but also in other contexts such as film and architecture. So as far as creating games, 61% of developers use Unity, 94 of the top 100 studios use Unity, and the Asset Store has a wide variety of five-star assets all um, managed by Unity. From the perspective of film, we can see two examples, Coco VR and Norman's Island. Architecture, the Vancouver International Airport created a digital twin in Unity and DPR Construction utilized it as well. So as far as getting started with Unity, I would strongly recommend that you go through Unity pathways. Um, my journey involved me being curious about how VR games were made. So I wanted to learn Unity. So I looked up Unity pathways, which are basically, it's a free way to earn badges. Um, in Unity. So I currently uh, am working on the Junior Programmer badge and uh, I earned the Unity Essentials one. Um, and then Unity itself, the personal edition is free. So it's basically free to learn and free to use. So that would be my suggestion is to use the pathways. Now, Web3 is really a new way of using the internet where users are more in control of their data. So possible use cases of Web3 involve metaverse, blockchain gaming, and education. So in terms of the metaverse, um, imagine having one digital wallet uh, that could account for all the different payment infrastructures uh, all throughout the metaverse. In terms of blockchain gaming, um, utilizing crypto as well as NFTs as playable assets would be one use case. And certainly in terms of education, uh, imagine a digital wallet that stores all of your edu educational information as well as Web3 education platforms such as Web3 University and Odyssey. So getting started with Web3, you can see the link on this slide uh, is to a Web3 guide and also a link to Web3 education platforms. And so here are some resources for both AI, Unity, and Web3. So for AI, we have the New York Times article, Don't Ban ChatGPT in Schools, uh, information from the key opinion leader, Ethan Mollick. For Unity, we have the Pathways link, the link for Unity download. And then Web3, we have the Web3 guide and Web3 education platforms. And finally, here are the references. So thank you so much. Again, it has been an honor presenting for the second time here at Gatherverse. And let me know any questions that you have. Thank you.